good morning to everybody on our last sunrise safari for 2023 and uh, it is a very how can i say gray morning at the moment around that juma as you can see a lot of uh, how can i say misty areas a little bit further on good morning everybody my name is cedric and behind the camera with me on rusty we've got a bk so yes thanks for joining us on our sunrise safari and i'm hoping that we are going to get some amazing amazing sightings for everybody this morning um it is quite warm but at the moment yeah i think let's uh, move on i think because i, I want to try and get to trials dam as soon as possible why um because it's still nice and earlier i heard hyenas calling in that direction so i want to see if we're going to get uh, lucky with uh, maybe some hyenas around the den side so let's cross fingers and head over that side but joining us this morning of course on wendy it is going to be gabe and uh, muscles and poor and up there in eco training we've got uh, andrew and a uh, panda as you can see it is a live and interactive show so you've got any comments or any questions that you want to send through to us especially it is that it is the last day of the year please do so if you are watching on the wild earth app or the website make sure that you do register all right let's get going oh yes oh i can't forget about our fantastic team in ravonia how could i even forget and it's uh, mal's uh, last day of directing as well so Mal, I'm hoping that we are going to get some great sightings for you. I'm crossing fingers. This is our director this morning. And then our second director is Jordan. And then our tech team is a long list there. I think let's start with John, Emil and Lerato. So that is our tech team. And then our tech guru here at Juma is none other than Showmax. So let's do it. Let's go and take a look and see what we can find for the morning. As I said, I wanna go that side. I wanna go and just take a look just to see what's uh, been happening around Treehouse Dam area. <coughs> yeah, I can feel, yeah, I can feel a few little drops coming down at the moment. Not like drops, but it's more like a drizzle. Um, luckily it hasn't hit us yet, as, as of yet, but uh, we are pre prepped for it, so we're ready, we're ready. <laughs> Kelly, you said you heard that the largest safari vehicle in the world is a party vehicle today. A, a party vehicle? A party vehicle. Party vehicle. All right, well, you could say party vehicle. But yeah, it is the largest safari vehicle in the world for sure. Live, live safari vehicle. So, yes. I don't know where the party, we all, we never know. We never know about the party side of things. So I think maybe later on, you, yeah, maybe you've given us a, an idea. Or have we already had that idea? Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoping for great sightings this morning, really am. I'm hoping for some dogs or cats or hyenas, uh, some sort of uh, predator, which would, be, which would be very nice for the Sunday morning. So I think that's what we're going to try and look out for as soon as we can get to those hyena dens. But while we do that, I think let's go and take a look at the weather today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this from. I am Game Ranger Gabe, and behind the camera with me today, I've got the man with the big muscles and very, very small legs, which means he can't run very quickly. His name is Mpo. Hello, Mpo. The reason I'm giving Mpo gas so early on in the morning is on the 2nd of Jan, we have a race. I don't know who would want to start their year well, the new year with the loss underneath the belt, but it's fine. Let him carry on. But yeah, no party, party, party vehicles just yet. That's uh, the afternoon safari this afternoon as we start winding down for 2023. What a year it has been indeed. Craziness. Craziness. Absolute craziness. We were just speaking about it now. How uh, far? Oh, not not important. I am point. I don't. We're not. We're not really friends, so we don't talk about personal things like that. But I, I'm trying to remember who who I was talking to, to Cedric this morning. Actually, and I was like, it's amazing how quickly this year has just flown by. 
And then Cedric's like, yeah, I still remember <laughs> coming into the new millennia, the 2000s party. I was like, <laughs> wait, what? We're talking about this year, Cedric. He's like, yeah, no, it was insane. Oh, okay. <laughs> Moving along swiftly. My goal for this morning is nothing too crazy. It's just to drive on a road that I haven't been on once this stint. And that road is called Hyena Road. Maybe we'll find something cool down there. And that's why we haven't found anything too amazing just yet. Is because we haven't explored that road. Sorry, I just thought I saw something there. It's nothing to write home about. That's a big spider web across the face. Nothing too crazy. And this weather. Oh man, this weather. I can't deal with it. I thought we were done with the clouds and overcast. Picasso, please go find all those leopards that you've listed. Um, we can try. <laughs> Listen, I've been trying for the past like 10 days here, Picasso. I really I am. I'm not. I'm not driving around for my health at this point. At this point, I've done the small things. I'm looking for a big sighting now. <laughs> I am trying, Picasso, please. <laughs> but yeah, let's see who comes out. Columba is in Tortured or was in Tortured last. Mulwati all the way down in her nets. Two very far places. So Marubes is a good one. And Sumi. Maybe Mzemba. Who else? Shadulu might come across with the cub. Cedric's doing the western side, so maybe he picks up on them there. And we've got these two lone guinea fowl. I see these guinea fowl all over the place. From here all the way down to twin dams. Although they haven't helped me just yet with the sighting, I'm sure soon enough they will. And they're just the good grass right now. Busy feeding on seeds. Little helmeted guinea fowl. Usually, as soon as they see prey, they've got this lovely call. Uh, do you want me to read that comment? I heard it there. <laughs> <laughs> it's you rooting for him, Paul. <sighs> okay. Okay. I can't help you with that. <laughs> so like I was saying, this guy's all over the place from here all the way down to Twin Dams on Nyala South, Vulture Vulture's Nest. And it's always just the two of them. So I think the one keeps the other one safe. While the one feeds, the other one looks around making sure there's nothing coming to eat them. This also tells me one thing. Because these are flock birds that perhaps these are probably the two smartest guinea fowl we have. Because they've been able to outwit and outsurvive other guinea fowls that would have been part of this flock. So they know how to dodge a Wahlberg's eagle, how to get away from caracals and leopards and find a safe place to sleep at night. Very interesting. Whole bunch of frogs calling in the background. It's to do with all the rain we've just had, that's why everything's looking so green and that's probably why these guinea fowl are smiling. Nice juicy grass seeds for them. Fulled, packed with water and nutrients at this time so they don't have to go around looking for too much grass and Mary Sutton you said you would like some New Year's spots oh, talking about spots what's happening with our hyenas Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a hot topic. I feel like that's a very hot topic at the moment. I'm just going to plant this seed. The Kruger male lion came from that direction. Hmm. 
Hmm. Why are the, the den sites dug out? Both of them. Interesting. Okay, folks, we're going to carry on. <coughs> we're going to head down Aina Road. Mal, just a little bit of a heads up here. The last half of this road. Okay, perfect. There we are. There we are. Okay. Looks like we've got another teammate up and about this morning. As I carry on down Hyena Road, I'm going to send you through to Anda, Anda, Anda and Pandru <laughs> to say good morning. <laughs> Don't look at me. Bright and early out at Zebra Plains, he had eco training. What a maybe it's at the moment, but it's nice and warm. And I think it's a warm day overall, about 27 degrees. So for now, we're going to these cool temperatures. Morning, everybody. My name's Andrew. That's Panda behind the camera. And let's not forget Artie, the vehicle over here, joining us on our safari. Hello, Artie. Breakfast, of course. Right, so what is up? Yeah, we had a, a stunning game drive yesterday evening. I see that left. I believe uh, from all of you was identified as Pixie Pan female. So thank you very much for that. And uh, I think uh, for this morning, we're going to head up to the north again. We're going to check around Leopard Dam again, just see what's going on. And who knows, maybe even head up towards Jejun Cut and just try our luck again with that leopard. But for the most part, it was a very, very calm night last night. Uh, not too much animal sounds. So I woke up this morning and looked for some hyena. So it seems like, yeah, most of the animals were quite still. Although I did hear some splashing in the water early this morning. I think at Lord Dam in front of our camp, uh, at Eco Training, there's a hippopotamus that's. Nurture your connection with nature with our weekly newsletter. Become an explorer and receive the latest word from the wild in your inbox. Catch up with your favorite Wild Earth characters. Watch the week's memorable wildlife encounters. Stay up to date with the happenings and what to expect from Wild Earth. Sign up today and get the best seats on the largest safari vehicle in the world. Wild Earth. Connecting with nature.
So I'm just feeling this uh, drizzle is coming through quite a bit now. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll have to try and get under a tree here. But we'll, yeah, let's just go stop under this tree here. Okay. Well, we're just going to try and stop under here. It wasn't drizzling just now. Now all of a sudden it's decided to really drizzle. I'm down quite a bit. All right, let's just see if we can pop in here somewhere and take cover for now. I'm just gonna quickly jump under the tree here for, well, um, <laughs> not much of a tree. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. well, um, all right, that's not gonna help. <laughs> I thought there was going to be a nice little spot here for BK and myself, but uh, clearly no, that did not happen. I just want to see the direction of the drizzle so we can, at least we can stop under a marula tree. Well, hopefully we can do that now. Oh, welcome back folks. We are now on Hyena Road and I cannot believe how wet this road is. Still, I'm gonna try and miss this puddle just because I saw a whole bunch of terrapins and frogs and another puddle just down the road. I don't normally drive on the edges of puddles, I just haven't walked through and cleared that puddle with a stick and I really don't feel like driving over a baby terrapin or a baby frog. That does not sound like a good end to 2023 for me. I was very concerned about the weather, it looked like it was going to rain, I did bring my camera with me this morning because I thought maybe we need a different, a little bit of a variant this, this morning. I haven't taken my camera the whole time, we've had ama amazing suns and I just haven't kept them. So I decided maybe if we bring a camera, something would be so kind as to walk around in the middle of the road for us. But. What's walking around Juma this morning though? Cedric said he was going to do the western side. Thank you. Yeah. Now the spider web. Webs across the road. And you get them either across your eyes or across your mouth. I don't know which better. Across the mouth. How did I sleep? And I can say, yeah, I slept with my eyes closed. You can people one day at a time. Yeah. I think I dodged that one. And Paul got smashed by that one. <laughs> it was at the spider web. Oh, and I'm very sorry by insects recently. Ticks have gotten a hold of me. Mosquitoes, which is weird, have gotten a hold of me. And I saw some really scary looking spiders in my bed. So I just decided to sleep and hope for the best. Pray that they won't, they won't mess with me while I sleep, because then I don't have to mess with them when I wake up. as we carry on here I'm gonna send you through to Cedric our signal is slowly following screen you're from Al, you're very quick there on the words I can't even yeah I just said something about uh, yeah. Something about, I don't know, oh, was it losing Gabe signal? Okay, do you apologize on losing Gabe signal? Um, I was <laughs> running with your words very quickly, I try to catch up there. Um, all right, so it is starting to rain a bit now, so we're just gonna slowly, it's back to camp area, trying just to get maybe the rain roof on, hoping we can do that. Yeah. All right, let's. 
get to the camp area. This drizzle, this drizzle all of a sudden decided. This morning it started clearing up. It was so nice. Stars, everything. And now all of a sudden it's just coming down quite a bit to the drizzle. Not like heavy rain, it's just heavy drizzle. That's about it. I think it's heavier when you're moving. That's a problem. Equipment. Why? Why must it drizzle? Ah. <laughs> I'm absolutely, uh, I can say, wet when it comes to rain and uh, drizzle on safari. I, uh, that's all right. <clears throat> I'm sure we will still get great sightings this morning. It's all going to happen. It's all going to happen. I think we're going to get one of the greatest sightings ever. Watch. Mm -hmm. Watch. And now it goes. So, uh, it's a Sunday D, something please. Uh, some lions, please. Thanks. Uh, I don't know why my comms is just running here. Uh, yeah, lions would be nice, Sunday D. It'll be fantastic. I'd love to see some lions this morning. That's why I wanted to do this area now. But I think we need to try and get back to, to camp ASAP to try and get uh, the rain roof on. Um, because, yeah. And I don't. Smell the equipment is good. Oh, what's this? What's this? What's this? Hyenas, you almost got a fright. It's hyenas. Yay! Hyenas told you something's gonna happen. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Sorry, I'm gonna quickly get my binox out here. Oh. I can't see exactly. There's an oh, there's wild dogs. Yeah, it's wild dogs. Wild dogs. Wild dogs. We've got wild dogs. Yeah, right here. Wild dogs. You, you thought it was dog dogs, so I did, but it, yeah, but yes, wild dogs now. We got wild dogs. Oh my word! See, we're just gonna get the great side. <laughs> oh my word! This is amazing. This is wow. Look at this. Uh, yeah, I gotta just quickly wipe the lens. Sorry. We'll have to just uh, sit a little bit back here, but yeah, ah, there it is. Except because these hyenas are busy following the, some of the wild dogs here. Oh, these are all behind us. One, two, three. So I can see f one, two, four. Oh, look at this hyenas coming towards the door. Dogs here. The wild dogs there. Hyenas just behind the wild dog there now. Typical with hyenas, always following uh, wild dogs. So as soon as wild dogs do, if they do make a kill, um, the hyenas will try and uh, steal the kill from the wild dogs. Because you know what? The hyenas is pretty much a larger of the two predators. And they can easily overpower wild dogs. But if wild dogs work in, as a pack, then it's a different story. But there's, oh, there's one, two, three of the clan members, yeah. <laughs> this one's just staring at the one dog that's inside there. The other wild dogs are just a little bit down Zoe's, right? I can see one of them that side, but we'll see what plays out here. Yay! This is brilliant. See? This is just what we needed for the morning. And there's a wild dog there with that hyena staring, eh? Yeah, it's inside there, eh? I think there's one in there. Or is there? Or is it moved away? Tutanay girl, yes, thank you so much. Yo, oh, what a way to go. What a way to start. I think let's go that side. I'm worried, we're worried that there is no dog in there. Let's just go quickly around. 
Hang on to Zoe's. Strange. Oh, maybe there is. Oh, there is still one in there. That's very strange. Oh yeah. Anna Marie, yes. Wow, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. A dog and the hyena. Oh. <laughs> Quarantine. Yeah, I don't think this grab's got the wrong wrong position here. We on. Uh, yeah, Gabe, we got Matlova here yeah, on Philmont Scotland Junction, Zoe's, eh? Okay, copy. There you are. Thanks. It is. Alright, go back that way again. Alright, let's go back that way again. I don't know, trying to see the hyenas. I uh, still trying to figure out which hyenas we've got here. But we will fathom that out very soon. I'm going to try and. Oh. Leopard lover, oh my sweet cake crumbs. Okay, that's interesting. Interesting wording that. Yes, this is, uh, it's amazing. And uh, looks like just the four, so there's that four, pack of four that they had apparently coming into Juma last night or yesterday afternoon. But just shows, even like with a bit of drizzle like this, the, the wild dogs are also. Still quite busy up and down. I don't know what they're looking at because you can see they haven't eaten. So, oh, this, uh, yeah, this uh, drizzle is also getting t a little bit in the amp. Hopefully, we can get under a tree or somewhere. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. What the? Well, I think they've gone inside that little bush there. There, there, I see the ears flicking. Uh, yeah, so there's somewhere there. Yeah. If you're hooked on AFRICAM's live wildlife cams, then it's high time you joined AFRICAM All Access. As a member, you'll be part of an exclusive pack with plenty of perks like uninterrupted, crystal clear streams, access to our chat feature, chances to flaunt your photo skills, and of course, exclusive content. Just head on over to AFRICAM's YouTube channel and hit that join button to sign up for AFRICAM All Access.
clearly you see what the, <coughs> the wild dogs are doing as well. They're taking, they're also taking cover now under a, uh, looks like a terminalia. No, it's not a terminalia, it's a combretum. Also just staying out of the, the drizzle for now. So we're all doing, everybody's doing the same thing. Poor hyenas are just uh, lurking around, hoping that uh, these wild dogs will start moving and uh, maybe bring down something, but uh, it's not going to happen anytime soon. No, it looks like there's four of them here. One, two, three years. Looks like all four of them are together here now. All four wild dogs. And this poor hyena is just... <laughs> <it's> hyena. <laughs> the hyena is just checking them out. <laughs> it's like watching the party from outside. GC says a celebratory sparkle. Nice, GC. That is, looks like a nice old sparkles, yeah? And this poor hyena. So please let me know. I'm trying to figure out which hyenas, because I know that we're also trying to ID some hyenas that we've been trying to see recently. Um, I don't know. This looked like Mbilu, the one that was here now. It might have been Mbilu, one of the, from the Juma clan. Okay, thanks, Mel. So we did have two hyenas here so far. Well, I'm just so glad that the wild dogs have decided to take cover here and rest for a bit. And uh, given that we were also given, uh, getting a little bit uh, wet, and uh, they've chosen a perfect spot for us to hide under a bourbon tree, so BK and myself can also keep dry. Yeah, Laura Cam, they're very calm at the moment. And I think what's happening is due to the, the weather situation now, I think typical, like, you know, when you even, when I always say like, you know, your dogs and cats at home, you know, if it's raining and drizzling and it's not, it's not pleasant, you know, sometimes the are going to go and take shelter, you know, they're going to go into the house or they're going to go and lie on the, the veranda, on the mat and uh, curl up and have a little bit of a snooze. So it's the same as what these wild dogs are doing because they can clearly see they've got empty bellies. You know, they would think this time of the morning that this is the normal time that they would usually go out and run around and go and hunt for something. But now they are very, very snoozy, very comfortable under this combretum and uh, all four of them are actually all huddled up there and this is exactly what we're going to see for now for now we are, we are going to wait to hang around here mm. oh okay so it's in Bilu and one of the unknown immigrants unnamed immigrants okay male all right, fantastic. Thank you so much for that information. Yeah, I thought it was in Bilu, that one. And then uh, the other one was, yeah, I did not, I've never seen that one before. So that was also a little bit of a surprise to me. Surprise, yeah. yeah. Well, we call it surprise. That's yeah. it. Yeah, there you go. So we, we had in Bilu and surprise. <laughs> It keeps on surprising all of us. It looks like a, I think I was on dab cam as well the other day. I was like, hey. Cheetahs and other animals. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, I wish I was on fire yeah, now, but it's uh, unfortunately it is uh, drizzling. So I think the drizzle has put my fire out. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, how nice is it? I mean, I know that's not the greatest of view at the moment. We will sit here and things can change up very quickly. And hopefully this drizzle will also let up uh, in the next few. And we might get some action from the wild dogs. But for now, clearly they are very content with life under that tree so, or under the bush. And I think that's exactly the same as us. We are content where we are. So. And this is exactly where apparently they came in yesterday afternoon. They came into this area. So they didn't move too far. You got to poncho. You didn't bring a poncho, did you? Ooh. No, cheeky baby Elliot. Uh, uh, BK did not bring his ponchos, yeah, but we did not expect it. That's why we didn't even put the, we didn't even put the rain roofs on because when we left this morning on drive, it was the stars was out. It looked like it was you know clearing up nicely, and then all of a sudden it just changed in like a matter of minutes. But I did, I brought my raincoat. Yeah, always oh, that's 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 a thing. I, I I learned in my years you know yeah in the bush that I always try to bring too much and too little. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, especially when it's cold. And if you don't bring a jacket and it's cold, your drive can be quite, uh, quite painful. But yes, what a way to start our last sunrise safari for the year with some wild dogs and hyenas together. So 50 at dusk, it can happen where the wild dog packs do break up and form new ones for sure it happens quite often um, sometimes you'll find that uh, you know the the, the pressure um, on the pack itself when the pack becomes too big is uh, too much and then sometimes you'll have two or three individuals four individuals that decide to say okay you know what we are rather gonna leave uh, the pack of origin and uh, rather just uh, move on and form our own pack and uh yeah and that's also very important you know so that's a really prevents uh inbreeding between uh the members and all that and so it is also very important for the packs to eventually start splitting up into smaller factions oh yeah those woodland kingfishers are in full tune this morning and that's what happened with the Toulon, the Toulon pack, I know, I mean, they were used to, that was quite a big pack. And I think these four is a break off from uh, quite a big pack. I think the Toulon pack was at one stage 24, 25, 26, something like that. And now it, it's not from, it's not long ago that they actually broke off from them. Maybe the last, maybe in the last three, four months that happened. And because the one's got the collar, yeah, now, the collar's a, a very, very important thing for research. So, because uh, the wild dog is one of the most uh, endangered predators here in Africa, um, you know, the, to keep the numbers going, to see the movements, to do the research on them, um, there is research uh, companies and programs that's been run on, uh, on the wild dogs to take a look exactly their, their movements and what's happening with them. And yeah, it's 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 very 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 important to the for that. I'm not too sure. I think it's the male that's got the the collar. Yeah, I think it's the male. So while these wild dogs are lying here, the hyenas have also decided to go lie down. You can't see them. But they went to go and lie under a African weeping wattle bush. So not too far from where these dogs are. We might have to try and reposition here again. 
All right, well, we are going to try and reposition, and sorry, I just had to take a, a cobweb out there. We're going to try and reposition. Let's, let's go ahead, head over to Gabe to see what's happening on his rainy safari. Gee, well done, Seros. It only took us 12 hours to find the wild dogs from yesterday. We'll take it. It's exciting. It's exciting. We are currently here on Hippo Pools, heading down towards Cheetah Cut Line. I'm going to go see if we can't find any tracks for Tlalamba coming back over into Juma and probably from there down to Twin Dams, go look at the water. Yeah, taking it easy, nice and easy. Got a few more days left of this stint and then I get to go and see my family and just say happy, merry, belated everything. Oh, uh, spider web, uh, biting. These insects this morning, I was just telling him, poor, they're all over my legs for whatever reason. And it's a little bit frustrating. They're biting, poking and probing my legs. It's not the most comfortable sensation. It's just uh, probably has something to do with this weather. Nice and humid, overcast, warm though. Very warm. It's not cold. Although, if you, you could be confused if you looked at him poor. It looks like we're about to venture into the Arctic Circle looking for emperor penguins. Doesn't matter the weather and poor comes prepared for it all. No, I'm purposefully not looking back because I'm sure he's pulling a face at me now. So I'm just going to carry on looking forward while we look for something spectacular. There's a massive, I think it's a female, rock python, and how incredible is that? Look at these two pushing each other. Hello boy, how are you? Okay, copy Nick. If you could just keep me updated with those corns, I'd really appreciate that. But those Matoa, there's a lock running there at uh, Philemon's Cutline Zoe's. Oh. Alright, uh, those four. Uh, 
if him as far as I know. Okay, there you are, Nick, I'm done. You gotta move on now. Alright, thank you very much. Yeah, I'll with them, yeah. Hello. <laughs> they saw them yesterday. Everyone's looking for buffalo. Yo, sorry man. I wish I had some good news for you, but we haven't seen any Nyari in a while. Okay, I'm done, Nick. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, chickens. Cute little things. Nyari. Oh, maybe we might get some lions. Hmm. Maybe we've got some Inkahumas here somewhere, guys. Okay, folks, as we drive around here and follow up on some of these updates, we're going to send you through to Andrew to see what he's up to. Right, thanks for that update, Gabe. Yeah, sounds like uh, everything is out and about there, Juma. Yeah, we found some giraffes at the moment, and uh, there is some elephants in the bush just behind us feeding. Just, it's a little bit of a struggle to see them. So luckily, there's uh, two giraffes just feeding on these trees here. I'm just looking at this male giraffe. We have seen him before, and uh, he's definitely identifiable. If you have a look at the snout, the end of the nose is very different to the rest of the giraffe. Instead of being pointy, it sort of tapers down. Very different. So it's interesting what happened earlier on, you know, when we we saw these giraffes first and then we saw the elephants and there was a female elephant and uh, there are calves in their group and uh, they were acting really, really unhappy with uh, the presence of these giraffe over here. And then we came along and the elephant raised its ears and raised its head and uh, calmed down but did move off into the bush. Lola, this male giraffe is dark, uh, that's right. So he's a dominant bull. And for many years, I remember telling my guests on safari this, for many, many years that it's generally the older male giraffes that tend to go dark. But uh, just a few years ago, just some new research and new theories came um, out about their color. And uh, the new statement is that it shows a level of dominance, which makes a lot of sense. You know, a lot of the male animals out in the bush felt are a lot darker than that of females. And if you think of red hearted beast or sesame or sable antelope, giraffes, I mean the males are very dark and uh, influenced by a level of testosterone. And therefore, the more dominant the animal must be, according to what they say. But what we do know about giraffes is that females are attracted to those darker males. It's said to be stronger genetics. So these males that go dark, you know, they're, they're they're going to be great breeding material and gives the females a chance to receive genetic delivery, which means basically getting pregnant and promoting genetics. Yeah, he is a proud, good looking male. But I reckon he was probably deformed like that from birth. And it doesn't seem to be hampering uh, him in feeding whatsoever because, you know, the lips are still quite pointy. If you look at a, the shape of a giraffe's head, it's very elongated and narrow because why? They're browsers. They've got to put those heads between small gaps in a lot of thorn felt. So it needs to fit. And you often watch giraffes very carefully and you'll see they'll stop and they'll stare much like this male is doing now and just having a look at the environment and if we could like you know sort of record what they see in a 24-hour period and how far they're seeing those things i think you would all be very very surprised
I would love to have their eyesight. Panda, what about you? Yeah. Yeah? Now, the eyesight must be impeccable, seeing all sorts of things from a great distance. Different books say different things, but uh, they say that giraffes can see 30 kilometers plus on a day that is clear. From the very, very far distance, but it's not the best eyesight of the wildlife. And you think of vultures, and they can see carcasses on the ground while they are soaring and they are a speck in the sky. Incredible eyesight. So today is the 31st of December, and I just want to say happy birthday to my sister out in, uh, in, in Gauteng. I hope you have a good day out that way. But more so, yeah, we're starting the, um, the donations drives, which will last until the 4th of, uh, of January. Um, and we're just trying to raise some funds so that we can try and update some of the equipment and replace equipment, because I must tell you that, uh, yeah, these things get replaced all the time. And that's going to be, well, it's currently happening all the way until the 4th of January. As we race towards 2024, we need to repair or replace quite a bit of technical equipment. We'd also like to expand into other wilderness areas, and for that, we need Starlink. We want to make 2024 the best in Wild Earth's history. In the next seven days, we're going to run a donation drive to try and raise 15,000 US dollars. This will go a long way to helping us continue with our mission to connect people with nature. We're still here with uh, the four wild dogs. As you can see, they are still resting under this combretum. Now they're going to get their heads up. Uh, I think the hyena not too long ago sneezed and startled the, the wild dogs. Uh, but the big thing as well is apparently uh, the Nkuhuma pride of lions. Uh, their tracks is coming into this area from, from the west, coming east directly to where we are now. So I'm just, just, just keeping my eyes open and peeled and looking out. Maybe there might be lines that, uh, that might be lurking somewhere. Yeah.
Sorry, the guys are just trying to get hold of here. I just want to quickly let them know because uh, one of the guys seems like he does not know that there's wild dogs here. Yeah. Uh, stations, I don't know if you did copy earlier, but I've got the former Chloa here at uh, Philemon's Cutline Junction with Zoe's Lullapines under Combritum here. So, um, yeah, just myself and Locke. Hundred percent, yeah. The lala pans say yeah, they're not moving any anytime soon, yeah. So I'm just letting the other station know about the the four wild dogs here yeah, because apparently the message was not relayed to some of them. So yeah, just letting them know. But yeah, on top of that, so uh, the 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 pride of lions that's coming through on Ze a road called Zebra Drive. Zebra Drive is directly west of us, straight west of us. Maybe even, not even far, I'd say about 200 meters west of us. It comes onto a big service road called Triple M. And apparently that pride of lions tracks is heading into this uh, direction. Um, I haven't seen anything out here. I haven't seen anything on Philemon's cut line. Um, so yeah, we'll just keep our eyes open and to see if they're not maybe lying a little bit further west from where we are. But for now, we are going to just stick with the wild dogs. At least the the drizzle has subsided. Uh, the drizzle's gone, gone completely now for, for the time being. And it might actually get the, these wild dogs a little bit more active now. So, you know, as I said, they, it seems like they haven't caught anything this morning. And this is a typical time for wild dogs to move around to go and look for something to eat, like you know maybe impala or daika or steenbok, something like that. And I think the hyenas are they're pretty much lying not too far from where the wild dogs are. And I think the hyenas what they're doing they're also just waiting for the wild dogs to get active and start hunting and then at least they can follow them and hopefully steal the kill from the wild dogs which i'm sure the wild dogs won't be too happy about but um yeah for now all four of them are just still resting in this uh, little grassy spot underneath this combritum you can see now and then again the little ears are flicking and the tails and all that So, so Michelle, uh, do, what did I have the reports of the wild dog sighting coming to Juma? Uh, I think that's a great. Uh, yeah, we did get the report yesterday that the wild dogs are crossing into Juma. The four of them. I know that Gabe and uh, and Rico and Gabe came into this area. They followed up. Uh, do we? Yeah, yes, yes, we do have to report. We have to report uh, all sightings. No, not all sightings, of course, not, we're not going to report in parlor sightings and, you know, Steenbok and all that. But when it comes to lion, leopard, wild dogs, uh, cheetah, you know, things like that, we will report for sure. I guess may, ah, you so maybe report to the research team. Maybe, maybe that could be the, uh, the question. Um... Yeah, we can do it. I know Grant Beverly. He's the he's the pretty much the director of uh, of the Wild Dog Research Center for the Greater Kruger National Park, and um, I'm sure he knows exactly the movements and all that. Especially with the the one wild dog here that's got the collar, so I think they can really pick up on uh, the position on where these dogs have been moving to. Very important, I know that they've got the whole database for it. So it's, even with the Panthera, so there's that program that we got, that Panthera database program, and even that Panthera database program, it's not just all about lions and leopard. Um, it's also with, we also, also with uh, wild dogs. So if we do see wild dogs and all that, we usually uh, try and put down on that database on how many adults we've seen, how many males, how many females, um, you know, the numbers and what they've caught. Oh, they're getting ready. Ooh, well, they were getting ready. Like, maybe not anymore. So, yeah. So, yeah, and then, then they'll they all kind of just, uh, I can say, grab that data from the Panthera program, and uh, they can also pretty much run that data with their own data 
you know, together to actually get uh, a rough estimate on numbers and movements and all that kind of thing. So, and it's not just us. The entire Swabi Sands, all the lodges here in the Swabi Sands does that. Ooh, see, it's getting a little bit warmer. Oh, they're going to get ready. I've got a feeling that they're going to go lie down. <laughs> I, was getting, I, was, I, was getting, I was getting a little bit optimistic there. I was like, yes, yes, here it is. Uh, they're going to get ready. But I'm sure they will sooner or later, as I say. It's clearing up a little bit of blue skies. So I'm hoping that this will encourage them to start hunting. Yeah, it will. Things can change up, you know how it goes in the wild. Things can change up so, so quickly. <clears throat> One moment you see things are lying down fast asleep and the next moment everything goes crazy. So yeah, we shall wait. But what a nice way for the last uh, day of the year to have wild dogs, isn't it? It's fantastic, fantastic. And of course, we, what is also amazing is that we can bring wildlife uh, to your screen from wherever you are watching from. As you know, this is the largest live safari vehicle in the world. And you can sit back and enjoy the sightings with us. And I can't wait to see what 2024 has in store. No, there's no one else. Uh, I'm not too sure what Nick and them. Sorry, we're just discussing quickly here yeah, that there's one guy who wants to come on here, but he's he doesn't know if there's other vehicles from other things. I don't know about Chit one that well. I don't make that call. They need to, they got to discuss it between themselves. Yeah. But you can see a lot of flies also irritating the wild dogs. The same with uh, BK and myself. There's these small little ones around here. Mm. <laughs> Sheila, yeah, no, look, uh, we are very, we are very fortunate this morning, especially that when it was drizzling, and I was thinking, I was telling Bika now as well, we were saying, yeah, but you know, if the wild dogs had to continue running and all that with that heavy drizzle, there was no ways, yeah. there was going to be no ways we're going to follow because uh, it's just everything's going to get too wet, the equipment and that, and then, but some or other chance, the uh, wild dogs have decided to go and rest under this chair under this bush and uh, gave us a perfect position as well under a weeping bourbon which uh, gave us some cover so perfect perfect scenario and it played out just right we've got the largest safari vehicle in the world and we've got the largest umbrella <coughs> look at our umbrella it's huge eh? <laughs> But talking about the hyenas as well, with Mbilu, yeah, she is so big, eh? Wow, she is so big. And I know Mbilu should be now two years old, I think. I think it's two years old now, that one hyena. But, well, anyway, well, we're going to continue sitting here just to see what's going to happen. I'm sure something's going to play out here very soon. But uh, while we do that, let's head over to Eco Training to see what's happening on Andrew's side. Oh, Cedric, there was giraffes here. They, yeah, they're heading through the bush now, and I think they're going to disappear. But we were watching these giraffes very carefully, and this male is very interested in this female, and uh, is sort of doing a little bit of testing to see her eastern levels. And what we did see was he was uh, smelling the sort of the back end of her, and then every now and then, you know, tasting, 
And especially what will happen is if she, once she urinates and starts urinating, you actually see this when the male really wants to test the urine uh, to see if she's an Eastern, uh, he'll actually go there and taste it. And his tongue comes out and takes in a little bit and then tastes it and then we'll realize, all right, she's ready to, to breed and then, you know, mating process takes place. What's also interesting is what happens between the segments because, you know, the, the previous segments I did, we also did the, the giraffe. So, and now we're doing the giraffe again. So for many people, it would lead you to think that we've been here the whole time, but actually not. And uh, what happened was uh, the elephants behind us were slowly coming out. We tried to go there and we lined them all up, but they were moving around and it wasn't working. And then Mel wanted to come to us and the elephants had disappeared. So we quickly came back to these giraffes and here we are. So, no, we have not been here the whole time. But yeah, take a good look at the overview of the bush. It's very grey skies in the background, quite a nice contrast with all these trees and bushes. I'm just going to let this vehicle bypass us. I did let them know that the elephants were around here, so they come to, to take a look. And off they go. All right, what are we hoping to see today? I'd love to hear from all of you. What are you really hoping? But let's keep it realistic. And uh, hopefully we can find those animals. Panda, our last day here, what are, are you hoping to see? Keeping it realistic. Some lions, okay. <laughs> Mel, yo, that's uh, that's uh, quite a quite a request. So Mel, what did you say? You want to see a leopard in the tree again with a ballerina hippo? <laughs> we'll look out for those. <laughs> Although there's a hippo at Ndlovu Dam at the moment, uh, and not really acrobatic at all. Just sits in the water all day. So we'll leave that hippo. And also, we don't really get signal that side. It's strange. Ndorvu Dam used to be one of our top spots, eh, Panda? Mm -hmm. Sit there at Ndorvu Dam for a couple of hours in the heat of the day, having elephants come down, and then one day, just like that, poof! Signal's not working there anymore. All right, we have another vehicle that's on approach here. We're just gonna let them pass. All right, so it's Anton's farm, farm guys, and they're getting ready to do some or conservation work or road clearing this morning. Step into a world of discovery as you join Eco Training's renowned courses in the heart of Kenya's Masai Mara. These courses are the perfect way to gain a deep understanding of the African bush, even if you have limited time. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to experience the wild in a meaningful and life-changing way. Enroll today and embark on a transformative journey with eco-training in Kenya's Masai Mara, the leading force in conservation education.
mood is okay. <laughs> it was just too good. But yeah, you know, you find other ways to keep yourself entertained in the bush. Apparently Mulwati is heading this way. Maybe we find a very surprised leopard somewhere. I just don't know what I am doing wrong or if I'm wearing the wrong cologne. Oh, I missed that. What was that in Paul? Ah, okay. Um, now you just find other ways to keep yourself busy. And I'm sure at some point I'm going to have to find a tree and channel my inner leopard again just to just to feel closer to what I'm trying to find. Yeah. Life carries on, guys. You know, sometimes, like I said, I think I said it two days ago, this is like going to a disco. Sometimes you walk into the disco and they're playing your music and you dance all night and other times they're playing horrible music and you're just thinking, what am I doing here? I'm currently in the what am I doing here phase. <laughs> These spider webs today. Alright, well, while well, we are still sitting here with uh, the four wild dogs, still no change, but I'm sure that they're going to be, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of movement uh, sometime shortly. I've uh, got a feeling about it. I'm just going to hang back here patiently and uh, see what plays out. I did see some impalas a little bit further south. We can't see it now, but there was a herd of impalas that was also moving into this uh, direction, which is going to be a good thing as soon as these wild dogs see those impalas. I'm sure we are going to get some action then. But for now, they are still just taking a little bit of a snooze. And when we saw them earlier, you can see that they haven't eaten anything, so it's not like they are full. I think they just kind of took shelter from the heavy drizzle this morning. But yeah, while the numbers are so low uh, around in this area, or well, actually pretty much in the entire Africa, is uh, the big reason is other... There's other um, uh, predators, you're more the bigger apex predators, so like your lions, your leopards, hyenas, they are larger predators compared to uh, the wild dogs. Wild dogs are built very, <coughs> very light, um, mainly due to, for, you know, typical, uh, uh, you know, lightness for stamina, so they can really cover great distances very quickly, and so they're not as heavy as these big predators. And unfortunately, many a time, You'll find uh, even the adults, but mostly a lot of the pups, uh, survival rate for a pup to get to two years old is only about 10 to 15 percent. And the reason for that is, uh, you know, you'll find other predators will, you know, kill the pups. And uh, I think it was not last year, year before, one of the packs here lost uh, 16 pups overnight. 16 pups overnight. Not in this area, but further south in the Sabi Sand, south southwest and uh, due to lions. So, yeah, lions came into the area and at night time they killed all of the pups. So, yeah, that was a little bit of a sad thing, but that's what happens. Elimination of competition. I do not want to have any other competition around. And that's why we always also have to really keep our eyes peeled. If we get a, a, a feral dog that comes in here, and it's got the rabies or something like that, you know, a domestic dog. Um, you know, that could also be a big, big issue. I mean, if one of these wild dogs catches a dog that's got rabies, you know, those, that rabies will pretty much spread throughout the entire pack, and uh, you can lose that entire pack in a matter of weeks. So, yeah, so we have to always keep our eyes peeled for those kind of things. I think that was also, what was it, canine distemper. I think canine distemper came through one of the other reserves, not this reserve, but there was another reserve, one of the a disease called canine distemper, and so a disease that will eliminate the entire pack over, overnight. That's why we have to always have the research going. Always have to make sure that 
The dogs are still fit, no diseases, and everything is all good and well. I don't know what the numbers is now yeah, in uh, Greater Kruger Park. The last I heard was, I think it was about 250 uh, wild dogs uh, th throughout the entire Greater Kruger Park. 250 wild dogs. So it's a very, it just shows you, the numbers is very, very low. And the largest pack I've seen was a pack of 33 or 34 years ago. Got to see, I think it was called the Open Pack. And I was working at uh, another lodge called Nkoro, and uh, we had that pack coming down to the pan the one morning. I was about 33, 34 dogs. So some of these packs can really get to a proper size. Unfortunately, it looks like this pack of four hasn't had any pups. What's her name? Fifty. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't see, I didn't hear that. Uh, Mel, just go with the name again. I got the question, but just go with the name again, please. Trixie. Trixie. Uh, Trixie. Uh, Trixie, uh, yes, look, I think the population is getting a little bit better, I'm sure, you know, uh, unless it's just plateauing. In other words, it's not growing or it's not uh, decreasing. Um, so I think it's just plateauing. Uh, I'm not too sure. I, I've got, I think that's the last I heard it, that there's no, like, real increase or decrease in the numbers. So it's just a typical thing that is just, I like, kind of got the same numbers going. Um... I mean, that's, uh, I might be completely wrong. I might, you know, it might be uh, on a huge increase or, <laughs> or a decrease, uh, as I say. But uh, the last I heard was it is just very much uh, stable at the moment. And I think <clears throat> the big reason for that is the research. For that is to make sure that the dogs are in good health and, uh, you know, um, the feral dogs are kept out of the areas, making sure that that is uh, not going to be the demise of uh, an entire pack. So yeah, those is those are the things that uh, they've been working on quite hard yeah, in the in these private reserves. Well, actually, in the entire in the entire reserve. Uh, Daniela, uh, what else is to improve wild dog population? It's uh, very tough. I mean, like, if you've got a greater Kruger Park side of things, I think the only things that you can really improve is just by the, you know, the fences, making sure that the, the wild, because, you know, wild dogs can cover great distances very quickly. They can, uh, you know, if they, if they go out of the reserve for some other reason, there's a hole in the, in the fence and all that, and they move out the reserve into, you know, other lands, then it's a big problem. You know, you'll lose that entire pack very quickly. Um, so I think, you know, just by making sure that the fences are upkept and, uh, um, you know, keeping things out like the feral dogs and keeping the wild dogs in, those are very, very important things. And, um, yeah, and it's just, uh, just the programs itself. I think as uh, the research, there's a lot of uh, research on the outskirts of these reserves that uh, pretty much uh, rear uh, wild dogs and making sure that they put uh, introduce the dogs again in back into the reserves and just to make sure that those numbers are done uh, in the correct way. So, you know, there's one or two things that they they do pretty much do to make sure that they, you know, they keep the numbers at a perfect, uh, how can I say, at a healthy rate. So I am uh, I am playing the patient game here for now. Uh, you know, as I say, I've got just a little hunch that uh, we might get something happening anytime soon, especially if there is impalas, herds of impalas coming through a little bit further south from where we are. 
And I mean, wild dogs have got phenomenal sense of hearing. So as soon as they hear maybe a grunt or a snort of an impala, it's going to get these dogs attention and yeah we might get get might get some action but for now it seems like it's sleeping dogs now exactly mal those satellite dishes on their head is uh on their heads are quite uh, quite useful but there's also this saying <laughs> so there's also that saying what let sleeping dogs let the rest die. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to. I'm waiting. <laughs> and I'm sure we're going to get something going. Ah, sleeping dogs lie. Let sleeping dogs lie. That's it. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Mel. Now and again, a head or two pops up. Mm. Mm. No. 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 Mal. <coughs> no. No. Mal. You didn't know. I just heard Franklin, and that's about that. And then I heard like, what the? Oh, ah, eh. no. That did not come through at all. Franklin, no, not all at the same time. The female uh, wild dogs don't all, it's just a, really the alpha female. Sometimes you'll get a beta female. It has happened quite a few times where the beta female will also pretty much uh, go into estrus and all that. Um, but they're the only ones that will breed with uh, the alpha male. Um, what happens as well, that happens around about, oh, uh, beginning of, should be actually beginning of the year. In about was it February, March? Yeah, it should be about March. That's when we remember we saw the uh, the six pack or that other um, small pack of wild dogs actually mated last year. I think it was March. And um, yeah, and then by that time, 90 days, of course, uh, gestation, and then usually they will start denning at around about May, June. Say about May, they'll start looking for a den site and for the female to have a pups. And uh, once she has her pups at that den site, they'll have a territory, a set area, a set territory around where that den is. And uh, they won't go too far, looking for things to hunt and all that. And around about maybe August, September, so it's just September, those pups will be old enough to start moving around with the adults. And then they'll leave that den site and then they won't really have a territory anymore. Then they'll have a pretty much thing called a home range. And a home range for the wild dogs around here can be easy from about 70 to 75,000 hectares. That is a home range for a pack of wild dogs. And then they can move, start moving around. But it's just really, as I say, coming back to the question, it's just the, really the alpha female and the beta female that will go into heat. And sometimes they won't go into heat at the same time. No. Sometimes I've seen actually a female giving birth much later compared to the first one. Maybe like a month or two. And I'm talking about just the pups and all that. Yo, um, it was the San, the Ot San Ottawa pack that actually had. Oh, okay. Sorry, that was a mouse just uh, talking to me there. So the San Ottawa pack, uh, they had 18, I think, 18 or 19 pups. I think they're down to 12 now, if I'm not mistaken. I must just find out. But that, I was really hoping for that pack to come over to Juma so we can get to see those youngsters, all those young ones. But it looks, seems like they've been hanging around quite a bit more in the western Sabi Sands. So the western area of the Sabi Sands. I was actually trying to figure out, find out how many pups they've got left there maybe mal can let me know maybe somebody can just give us a an answer on that and then i'm sure mal will relay to it me
Whether you're a retiree, a recent graduate, or a professional seeking a change, the 55-day eco-training program is for you. With the coaching of experienced training guides, you'll embark on an unforgettable adventure that will give you a deep understanding of wildlife, conservation, and African cultures. If you sign up locally or internationally using this promo code, you'll receive 2,000 Rand off. Folks, we've just found some birds playing charades. The bigger bird on the bear tree is busy acting at art, and the other birds are all guessing. That's what's happening here. It's not too common you get to see birds interacting with each other on a playful level like this. No, it's not a book. I think the role is trying to tell him it's a movie. But we do have a Wahlberg's eagle here with some starlings and a roller, keeping a very watchful eye over him. Just making sure he's not going to get up to any mischief trying to raid nests or catch anything small or try and hurt something. The guardians of the bush felt those birds up there. Making sure these birds of prey stay in their lane. They do this through mobbing behavior or through alarm calling, letting other birds know that there's a threat in the area. Your starlings are especially good at this. Oh. Let me put that a little bit softer. so strange we've got these dark clouds behind these birds and the sun peeking out to the right and it really makes for some good photography to be honest it's you good light okay let's carry on we've got quite a way to travel still I'm trying to get down south a little bit guys and hopefully come right with some felines we'll have to wait and see Hopefully we come right. And if we don't... Oh, there's some buffalo through here last night. Okay, folks. I'm going to carry on with my mission. Let's go through to Cedric, who says the wild dogs are looking a bit more lively. Hmm. 
All right, looks like we've got some action. I told, told you. Have the patient pants on. And finally, looks like the dogs are starting to get a little bit more active now. And, um, yeah, there's just a vehicle that's just joined us now as well. But there is impalas down this side. So we're going to just see exactly what these wild dogs are going to do now. I want to take a look. Oh, the one's going to lie down. This one is just biting a stick. All right. I was just chewing on a stick. <laughs> Cheetahs and other animals. Yes, it is always important to have the, the uh, patient pants on. And that is that's one thing about always with wildlife. You know, I know sometimes you find lions that's sleeping or the uh, leopard is sleeping or wild dogs are sleeping. But you know, sometimes you got to just sit there and observe and wait. And that's when you really get to see the, some interesting interaction and stuff happening. Always just got to wait. Be patient. Be patient. Be be patient. Well, this one was just eating sticks. But yeah, they're gonna get they're gonna get moving very very soon, very shortly. I think there is impalas down there to the s south of us. Hopefully, they can see them. Well, the one wild dog was looking to the south there. So, all right, here we go. The one is moving a little bit out now, and might might just end up. Moving away. Uh oh. <gasps> oh, Catherine, I'm not too sure about them denning, if you have ever denned in uh, Juma. That is, yo, oh, uh, I haven't, I mean, I, since I've been here in the north, um, the only time that we had actually a uh, wild dog uh, a den is. Um, there was on the western area, I think towards Shirley's Elephant Plains. I think that's when uh, we had wild dogs denning. I think so. I think there, or was it Simombili? I can't remember. This was years ago. Ooh, what's happening here? There's something coming here. Oh, no, it's a hyena. Oh, it's, uh, oh, it's that, uh, that surprise. surprise. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a surprise. Yeah, oh, we've got surprise coming out there now. Come on. He's just behind there. Almost surprised us again. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's so frantic for this one because it's surprising all of us. So, uh, <laughs> uh, this is funny. You can see this one is just sniffing around. What are you going to do? Hmm? What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah the sun is uh, sun is coming out good time for maybe the dogs let's see I mean, don't go and lie down again don't lie down Yeah, but you can see a little bit of action going here, so it might end up moving. Let's see. Oh, uh, and about the Impala is far. The Impala is about maybe 200 meters south of us. I can't even see the Impala anymore. The Impala has moved a little bit further away. Yeah, uh, looks like the dogs have just started to... Uh, surprise, he's still coming here. <laughs> Uh, it's moving into the thicker stuff there. No surprise it decided to go and surprise Mbili with its presence. I'm digging up there, trying to get in a little comfy spot. There you go. He's going to go lie down. There we go. Oh, no. Yep, there it is. All right. All right, well, I can't really get to see too much of them now. Uh, they've just moved into a little bit of a difficult spot. We might have to reposition uh, shortly as the rain has stopped. So at least we don't have to sit under the bourbon for much longer. Oh. 
<laughs> a little, uh, what do you call it, uh, a woodland uh, kingfisher just came flying straight towards BK and myself here. Almost didn't see us. Uh, do you think we'll go there, eh? Have that sun there, eh? All right, let's try it, yeah. Okay, we're going to try and reposition here quickly. As I say, thank you, Burbin. Thank you so much for your cover. That'll be the best. Uh, mm -mm. You can work with it. It's a little just, I don't know what this one's doing. Bite, biting branches. I think what he's trying to do is trying to clear the little spot there for it to lie down. So. It wants to now make a nice little, how can I say, resting area. And maybe that stick is poking it in its side and that, and it's not happy. There we go. There we go. Now it's better. Uh, standing by, standing by. Uh, Cedric, standing by, standing by. Oh, there's a lot of movement going in there. <laughs> I don't know what's happening inside <laughs> in that uh, magic, uh, not to worry, to African weeping wattle. But there's a lot of movement there. <laughs> I think that it must be all in Bilu and surprise having a having a party, a end of the end of a year with, uh, function, yeah, hyena function there. <laughs> uh, standing by, standing by. Well, this guy's trying to get hold of me, but it, I don't know if it's going through. Oh, there's another one there, yeah. Pff, yeah, as soon as they lie flat, it's gone, yeah. Julian, uh, do wild dogs chew sticks to clean their teeth? Like using it like to, to like toothpicks, you were saying, I guess. Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. No, I don't think they're using sticks as toothpicks. Maybe that stick was just irritating that uh, that wild dog. So just trying to break it off to get a nice little resting spot. Hopefully they do go north. I can imagine if they have to end up going towards quarantine with all those impalas. It'll be just chaos. Absolute chaos. Ah, oh, Catherine, yeah, I know. What a, what a, what a way. I'm so, oh, as I said, it's a, such a nice way to have our saw start of a, of a Sunday morning. Uh, safari with uh, some wild dog action and uh, hyenas. Uh, that was very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Always nice to see wild dogs. I'd love them. Always can just sit and enjoy them. But unfortunately, now they are kind of tucked away in this grass, so you can't really see much for now. But I'll still be waiting. I'll still uh, hang around here for a, a last few and see if if we do get some action. Yeah. 
I started watching Wild Earth during COVID. I decided that I wanted to study more and I saw that Eco Training Pridelands was doing courses and I decided to do the eight week online theory course at the end of last year. There's just so much out there to learn and to experience. Sign up for an Eco Training digital course today with the promo code to receive 200 Rand off. So we are at Leopard Dam now and I must say this morning is a very, very quiet morning but there's still time so you never know what might just happen. But yeah, we're at Leopard Dam at the moment and uh, just sitting tight, just watching around here and we spotted some Egyptian geese with some goslings just across the dam. It's been interesting, you know, the, at Ndlovu Dam, there by Eco Training Camp, there's also a pair of uh, Egyptian geese and they had some goslings as well. We couldn't really show it to you because we were worried about signal and most days we couldn't get signal, so we decided to abandon that idea. But um, watching them, when the young hatched, there were seven young in total at Ndlovu Dam. And uh, the other day I saw them while behind one of the showers in the camp and I saw the same pair still with seven young, but now those seven young are almost the size of the adults now. So it's just amazing, you know, with the amount of predation in an environment like eco-training that that Egyptian geese pair managed to raise all of its young. It's incredible, really is incredible, because the amount of predation on the goslings is just so great. Everything and anything goes for them, really. There's lots and lots of birds calling at the moment, some southern black tits, Brew Brew? What else? And the Forktail Drongos. And we heard some, uh, a pair of Warburg's Eagles actually calling now. I don't think you're going to hear it. But then the other side of the Tamboiti drainage line. And uh, when we came through the drainage line, they were on top of one of these Tamboiti trees. And they were calling. And we switched off the vehicle and we just listened for a few moments. And it's such a nice sound that the, the Warburg's Eagle makes. Yeah, those southern black tits are going crazy in the bush somewhere there. Hello, morning Itzi. Uh, well, it's not impossible. We saw her the other day. 
north up into the Jejan area, which is a, a neighboring concession that we don't go on to. But, I mean, what's nothing stopping her from coming south again and back onto eco training? And it's interesting. And, you know, Anton gave me a little bit of sort of info about Jejan and a water hole that's situated somewhere there. And, you know, often, and this happens in a lot of game reserves where you have traversing agreements and you get to a certain road and you can't cross anymore. So on Jejan cut line there's a water hole just north of the cut line, so in Jejan land. And often enough when we have animals that go up into the north and cross that Jejan cut line, it's easy for us to say, right, well, that's it, the animal's gone, let's go south and carry on and look for something else. But a lot of the animals, they go to that water hole and drink and then come back down south. And uh, apparently if you just stick around on the cut line, once the animal has disappeared going north, just stick around and sometimes it's been observed that the animals go back south. So yeah, just a quick drink of water. All right, so there's another pair of Egyptian geese that have made their way to the water hole at the moment. Now this pair that's already in the water are not going to take lightly to that because they've got offspring or young. And sometimes other Egyptian geese have been known to attack other uh, mating pairs offspring to enhance the survival of their own offspring, but also to um, encourage more resources to be available around the water hole. Otherwise, everything's gonna get gobbled up and uh, they don't get a chance to feed. They have to move to another water hole, entering areas of competition, entering areas where they don't know what predators are doing over there. So once the Egyptian geese find a water hole, they try and be the dominant pair at that water hole. Wow, Cedric's had such a morning out at Juma. He's got some wild dogs, of course, so we're going to send you back to him. We can take a look at that again. Thank you, Andrew. Yes, they are still being very lazy. No change at all. The only update that I got here and the only change is that they said they found the Nkuhuma lions, nine of them, at uh, on Triple M South at Safari, Arathusa Safari Driveway Junction. So that's, uh, so of course they went straight south. Oh, I was hoping that they were going to come east into Juma, but unfortunately that has not been the case. But that's all right, we've got dogs, so that's fine. We've got the wild dogs. Well, in relation to where we are, those lines, they're about maybe, i say, one kilometre south of us. Southwest, to be exact. More south than west. Yeah. But a little bit west. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so look, I've got my patient pants on, but I think as well, I think maybe not too long from now, if uh, we don't get any other activity from the dogs, we might just, just move a little bit up at one of the roads. Uh, Cindy D. Uh, <sighs> I'm, I'm sure they can, but they're not going to attract one another. I think it's going to, if you have to get a wild dog and a domestic dog to breed, well, look, that is uh, then you that's just not going to be right. First of all, ain't going to be right. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, it can happen. Um, but yeah, they won't attract one another. I'm sure the wild dogs will rather just eat the dog. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only only thing. Yeah, but other than that, yeah, I'm sure it'll they will be able to. able to do, do something from the two different breeds there. I've never heard of it happening. That's a thing. You know, that's a, it's almost like the, where they did that lion and the tiger. Remember, what was it? The, the liger. Mm. But that had to be done. Uh, Linda, you say your dogs are doing exactly what these dogs are doing now. Oh, that is so awesome. 
Well, everyone's, everyone's taking a good old snoozy. Okay, here's a vehicle that's approaching us. But everyone's taking a snoozles. Yes, a Sunday morning snoozles. Sorry, there's another vehicle. Oh, yes, Mel. Oh, Mel, of course, our director today. She's got the most two beautiful dogs. Oh, Snoot and uh, Maya. Oh, beautiful dogs. And, uh, my, and uh, Mel saying uh, her dogs are definitely snoozing at this time of the morning. <laughs> Can imagine. For sure. But yeah, they might stay for a little bit longer, yeah, the dogs. I'm not too sure. Um, as I said, they haven't eaten. So, you know, if there is going to be something that's going to be walking through here, yeah, there is one in part of there. It's down there. Far away, there's one f female impala. Yeah, let's go take a look there quickly. It looks like a female impala with a, a lamb there. Is it a female? Yeah, it is. All by herself. So there's just one female. So she is looking this direction. So that's it. That's that's a distance from where that impala is. So I think the wild dogs won't hang. I don't think the, if we have to come back uh, this afternoon to this spot, I doubt that the wild dogs will be exactly here. Uh, it's a cool day, it's a cool morning, and I think they might use that uh, to their advantage. Oh, and another one moving here. Yeah, let's see what this one's going to do there. One is up now, another one's up behind the bush. There you go, a little bit of a... Uh... Oh, there he is, you can see that. Come on, look that way! The Impala's that side. No, don't go back that way. I'm going to lie in the thick stuff again. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay. Ay, As we race towards 2024, we need to repair or replace quite a bit of technical equipment. We'd also like to expand into other wilderness areas, and for that, we need Starlink. We want to make 2024 the best in Wild Earth's history. In the next seven days, we're going to run a donation drive to try and raise 15,000 US dollars. This will go a long way to helping us continue with our mission to connect people with nature.
Potter's <laughs> and Potter's just standing there. He's like, mm, "Why are you guys there? What? What's what's happening? Is there something that you're looking at?" Oh, well, it's got a few oxpeckers. I think she's enjoying those oxpeckers at the moment. Shame. Oh, she's loving that. It's like almost like when you got the little comb or something, you know, like, oh, yeah. Mm. All those little birds, the little oxpeckers. Is he combing through her coat, going into her ear? <laughs> Nibbling all the little ticks out of the ears and that. Oh, she's loving that one on the left ear there. Mm. There we go. Almost like the dogs when you scratch a dog on the ear. It's like, oh, and then start shaking. <laughs> she looks still pregnant, eh? Oh, it's not really... Right, so we've decided to stick around just a little bit more at Leopard Dam and yeah, I'll admit we're having a, a quick coffee as well. <laughs> but uh, it's such nice temperatures this morning and it's just such a pleasure to be here uh, this morning opposed to, you know, those blaring temperatures that we are used to out here. And I think the animals are enjoying it very much as well. Um, we can just hear a lot of the birds are making the most of these nice cool temperatures. Now, when we come to a dam like this, or you go on a safari sometimes and say it's a very quiet one, like now, it's, it's a very quiet morning and it's easy to say when you come back to the camp or to the lodge, wherever you're going, that, ah, we didn't see anything. But actually, you know, even though we're here and there's no main mammals, no, no big mammals to be seen, there's always something else to be seen. So for example, if we have a look at that white foam on the tree there, you can see there's evidence of an animal, the foam nest frog. And those are pretty cool in themselves. Now that's the average size one, so roughly the size of a cricket ball, but just being a little bit oval. But some of them can get double that size, and uh, the adults actually lay their eggs in that foam. And it protects, you know, the eggs against the sun and things like that. And as soon as those tadpoles hatch, they're going to fall out of there and land straight in the water and start their life. I've never seen that personally, but it, uh, it has been recorded where you see the tadpoles actually, you know, falling into the water. Very amazing and an interesting way of breeding. Then when we look in the water, there's signs of other life. If you look carefully, you're just going to see a few little heads bobbing up and down. You have to look very carefully for these animals. And these are terrapins of sort. We had the gosling family moments ago. So there's a lot of cool things in the, the environment. You just need to look for them. And sometimes they don't come in the form of being big. Sometimes they're very small, but they're still interesting. Look at those little heads. That guy is really swimming quite fast at the moment. Just moving through the water, making it look so easy. All right, and there's also a three-banded plover. You see it? Sorry, Panda, I know you're on handhold over there. But just across there, there's a three-banded plover. Just listening to a few birds, I can hear a brown crown chagra calling. And if any of you enjoy bird watching, this would be the place to be. This is an almost like an oasis for all types of animals to come down. Candace, <laughs> those foam nest, frog nests remind you of lemon meringue pies 
Interesting, interesting. But there's, there's uh, talking about meringues, there's actually a company in the Eastern Cape that makes these meringues. And uh, yeah, I'm not one to eat meringues, but let me tell you, after I ate these meringues, and they've got these little cho chocolate chips in them, um, yeah, I, I buy them every time I see them. And uh, I see my dad has also taken onto them nicely. But th thanks for bringing that uh, analogy up there. You know, it does also look like that, uh, that lemon meringues. Sometimes it's amazing what we want to see in nature, not necessarily want to see in nature, but, but what we see in nature and can relate it to our own life, you know? So you see a lemon meringue sort of over there and, uh, you know, it's in the form of a foam nest frog. So that's, that's the sort of idea that I'm trying to get to is that, you know, your, your mind sees things in, in a way that it wants to see things according to your, your own life. And I've always enjoyed that. And often with safari guests, they come up with um, these, uh, these analogies, if you will, on things that remind them of certain things. And some of them are just amazing. And the one that always stuck with me, and I know that uh, some of our directors, they struggle to, to see it or when they hear it, but the jackals, when they're calling, I remember one of the guests saying it reminds them of, of witches on brooms. And then, you know, I, I mentioned that while I was with Morgan, and Morgan's like, how do you know what a, a witch sounds like on a broom? So... <laughs> I see we've got uh, Jordan, our director, as well this morning at MC, Mission Control. Got the taste buds going. She is keen to bunk work, which means skip work, to go and make some lemon meringue. Pangolins galore, most definitely morning. Yeah, I would say, yo. Eco training definitely being the capital for elephants, I would say. Yeah, most days we see them, but it does happen. I mean, with the amounts of elephants that have been known to come into to eco training over a, a period of three, four, five months is incredible. But sometimes we do go out there and we don't even see them. It's amazing, such big animals and sometimes the numbers in which they come in here and you just don't see them. So it just goes to show how um, the bush can really provide a lot of cover for animals, even those great big ones like elephants. But with the amount of water out at Eco Training at the moment, Leopard Dam full, and Lovu Dam full, and there's also HQ water hole that's always got water. Now, the water is available here, so those animals that are really water dependent, they are going to venture here if there's no water elsewhere. And that's the nice thing about being part of the Greater Kruger National Park is that the animals they will reconfine their their movement patterns. And I don't know if many of you know, but you know, some of these areas used to be fenced off and independent of the Kruger National Park and then became incorporated what they call the Greater Kruger National Park, like eco-training and so on. And animals, they start to recalibrate themselves and they start to shift their movement patterns according to what they can get to. Now, water being a very big one. I just see a giraffe in the distance, just doing a walk by. It's just disappeared now. Yeah, I am truly going to miss this place. Leopard Dam has always been very productive for us. Panda, you want to answer that? That one's for you. <laughs> At least you're honest. I appreciate your honesty. So yeah, Panda said no, he didn't spot the giraffe. I managed to spot it, but it wasn't a difficult spot. But Panda picks up a lot of things. And what I like about Panda and the way he works the camera is that he, he will give me a signal that he sees something. And uh, it gives me a chance to, you know, give him the thumbs up if it's a good idea to go to it. Because sometimes, you know, it's, the animal's going to disappear. And one of the, the things that, as guides, they don't particularly enjoy is when you want to point it out an animal and then when you point it out to guess and the animal disappear disappears it gives gives him that that moment of what what did he ha what what has he just seen so we always try and do a whole lot of mathematics to try and understand for ourselves if it's going to be in the best interest to you know point the camera there because as i say some of those animals they go into a hole very quickly or they go behind a bush very quickly 
But that's safari out here. That's often what happens. And one of the other situations that a lot of guides will encounter in their careers is, you know, you'll hear that someone is watching a leopard, for example, and then you, it sounds like it's all good, the leopard's in the tree, it's not going anywhere. And then we, we take a drive there, sorry about the radio there, and we take a drive there, and you literally miss that sighting by 10 seconds. Sorry, let me go and turn this radio off. That's the one thing I've noticed about the radios out here is once they start going, hey, they just don't stop. Well, it seems like that giraffe doesn't want to come down just yet. Is that dead Daz, if I got the name correctly? All right, or deep dares. Uh, sorry, Mel, can you just reconfirm that for me? But it's a pleasure. This is what we love doing. We love exploring the outdoors and then, and then sharing those moments with people. Deb Daz, there we go. All right, thanks, Mel, for that. That's that's the one thing about being out in the in the in the, the bush is that you know when you see something truly amazing and truly get great, you always like think to yourself, but like we haven't we, we haven't got the chance to share it with anybody, or if you're alone, that nobody else gets a chance to to see this. But being with a camera and being able to go live and reach out to all of you, um, it, it makes it so special because we don't just show ten people, for example. Um, our experience or our, our animal and um, that we found because you know you, most safari trucks have only got 10 seats on the vehicle but we, we can show so much more millions of you that watch are you in search of a unique unforgettable adventure in the wild? Imagine living with the animals you see on TV while getting an inside look at how a live safari TV show operates. We're thrilled to offer this experience through our 7, 14 and 28 day EcoCam experiences. To book your spot, visit wildearth.tv forward slash EcoCam. Come and join us for the bush experience of a lifetime. Right, we're still here with the wild dogs and we're still here with uh, this hyena. Uh, as you can see, the hyena is just watching the wild dogs and he's just waiting. He's like, come on, dogs, 
get up and go and chase something and kill something for me so I can steal your kill. <laughs> That's what they're doing. It's like it's just waiting. Uh, they got so much patience. Um, as you can see, the wild dogs still lying under the branch, bush. Yeah, it's almost like, come on now, it's about time. There is some other impalas coming down from the north of us. So there's another, like a whole herd of impalas making their way down this side. So we're going to see. Let's see. And that's one animal that's got a lot of patience is the uh, hyena. Wow, that is one. I can tell you now. I've seen them wait and wait and wait. You know, the wild dogs are still lying here. Um, you can't see it, but you can actually hear it behind us. There's an impala that's busy snorting away. Oh, there we go. A little bit of maybe repositioning here. A bit of a stretch. So there is impalas that's just north of us here. I'm hoping that they do pick up on those impalas. And if that does happen, then we will get some action. For now. It's just a little bit of greeting. <laughs> so, of course, Mel and Jordan, our directors, are just absolutely in tears in uh, FC at the moment because of the hyena in the background. That poor hyena is just waiting. It's like, come on, I need to, I need, I need this to happen now. Come on. These wild dogs, go and get something for me. <laughs> uh, that is quite funny. And the thing about the hyena, even if there is four wild dogs, they'll still steal the kill. Oh, yeah. Ah, Sir 50 for sure. I think uh, hyenas are so. <laughs> look at it again. Hyenas are so fascinating. They're amazing, amazing scavengers, amazing predators. You know, they 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 the ones that are like they're so persistent with uh, with getting something. You know, even if it's a pride of lions, it's on a kill. You know, they'll wait, they'll wait, they'll wait for backup from other hyenas, and eventually, if there's enough of them, then they can start really start irritating the lions around the kill, and eventually the lions are like, okay, you know what? That's it, we've, we, we finished, we're done, you, you won, we're going to move off. So yeah, but look at that face, look at that face. <laughs> a nice easy way to identify this one with a little neck in the left ear. So that left ear, on the top of the left ear, it's got a little neck out of it. It's one of the immigrant males. I don't think I've seen him before. Oh, 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 this one's getting up. This one is he's seeing something. I'm just trying to guide the other vehicle in here at the moment. Uh, <laughs> Sir 50 again. I didn't know. I just heard Sir 50 again. Sir 50. That's all I heard. Sorry, Mal. That's all I heard. Ah, 
Thanks, F50. Yes, of course, we'll spend some quality time with uh, wild dogs. I mean, <clears throat> you know, it is always nice and it's always you have to expect the unexpected. Sorry, I don't, I'm not going to talk too loud. But there's another vehicle that's just come in here. Yeah. I think I need to also lower my voice. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I get excited when I talk and then I raise my voice to terrible levels. <laughs> Look at that one. <laughs> that one is. <laughs> like typical dog on the back and then all of a sudden roll it over but the hyena is just staring them down it's like come on this is going to happen Mel did you get any IDs on on these wild dogs, is it the breakaway two lines? I just want to find out, sorry, because I've been always saying it's a breakaway two lines. Yeah, please, it'll be nice to you know, but uh, which. Uh, which clan, not the clan, which pack this is. So you said as well that the, the Ottawa Sand Pack has still got 16 pups. Wow, wow, wow. So they are still doing so well. That's fantastic to know. 16 pups. That is good. Hmm. I would love to see that pack coming onto Juma. You can imagine them with, with all the with all those pups running around and the adults 16 I think they at Ottawa I think they 7, 8 so if it's 16 with 8 I don't know, 24 24 wild dogs running down the road that would be fantastic I think Andrew had it the other day yeah yeah, he had in, in eco training he had like what 22 or something hmm yeah, 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 yeah. very very nice Wild dog or jackal tail? Well, if we're actually looking at size-wise, if you're looking at a side-striped jackal, look at their tails. They're nice and big and fluffy. So I would say a jackal, by size-wise, um, has the fluffiest tail between the wild dogs and the jackal. I think the wild dog tails is not as fluffy. It's nice, it's long, but it hasn't got that real fluffy look to it. So I think a side stripe jackal's got the fluffiest tail. Yes. And then you've got the out of size wise the most fluffiest tail would be the I think the white tail mongoose. White tail mongoose, you oh, have you see there they got those big white fluffy tails. Mm, you just see more tail than body. All right, so I'm just going to still try and figure out which, uh, if it is the two lone uh, breakaway pack this. And if anybody's got an idea, please let us know. But while we wait for those comments, let's head over to Gabe to see what's happening on his safari. Oh, sorry, folks. Mal, you've come to me at the worst time. I've got a sneeze building here. Oh, no ways. Okay, I think it's gone. Fluffiest tail, white-tailed mongoose, I think so. That or a squirrel. A squirrel could also have a very fluffy tail. Um, in my personal opinion, the fluffiest one right now, Anjuma, is definitely Ina's little tail. She's got a very fluffy little tail, tiny little thing. Oh, it's adorable. Speaking of, we're actually on our way up to the Ina den now. I'm gonna check all three on Taxons, see if we can't find 
any traces of those cubs. And then from there, probably Gari Dam. Yo, hey. What a morning. What a beautiful morning. Okay, we've got hyena tracks coming up here. I wonder if it's the one that was following the wild dogs or if this is the one maybe going towards the den to go follow up on the cubs. I hope it's one going towards the den to follow up on the cubs. I really, I do. I had a, what was my, I had a really, really strange thought yesterday. Yes, that was my thought yesterday. So you know how we walk around and we watch where we place our foot and like if there's a beetle there, we walk around the beetle rather as opposed to stepping on it. All of a sudden I started thinking, do you think elephants care about it? What do you think? Like do you think if they saw a whole bunch of ants on the ground, the elephant would be like, I'm not going to step on them. I'm gonna step over the thing. You're just like, <coughs> yeah. I was thinking this. I don't know. I don't know because I've seen elephants also kind of stop and like investigate with their trunk and then kind of walk in a weird, in a weird way, like chick, 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 and around. But I can't, I can't conclusively say, boof, it happens. I just thought shame. Imagine being like two little beetles. You're busy fighting over whatever you have to. And next minute. Squash. Elephant comes in, game over. Finished. Pelile. Okay, here's the one den. Let's see what's been happening here. It's very strange. It looks like it's even more dug out than what it was two days back. It doesn't look like there's anything on top of those elephant tracks. Mm. This is not good. This is really not good. Now I am starting to worry. Now I'm really starting to worry and I just can't think about where maybe Cedric might know of another place or you might know of another a den that they might have used. Because we also checked the one at the bottom where Ribbon had her cubs now supposedly. Okay, these are hina tracks. Look like they're coming up and there's small tracks here as well. They look like June June's cubs tracks. But I don't see little inner tracks. And they're going up this way, up towards that den that we just came from. Okay, well that's good news. At least one little cub is still there. I don't see the small little tracks though. You know, they walked from here up this road and back that way. But no small little tracks, no inner tracks. Uh oh. Mm -mm -mm. Mystery. Mystery, 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 mystery. <sighs> okay. Let's go check the second that other den on the western side. Ah, didn't hear it. Okay, we'll all just drop off for a little while. Didn't hear anything there. This immersive program will give you an in-depth understanding of the African bush in as little as seven days. You'll be guided by expert trainers who will lead you through the various ecosystems of Africa and teach you essential bush skills. Join EcoTraining's 7 or 14 day EcoQuest course and you will receive 500 Rand off whether you sign up locally or internationally using this promo code. Further your journey as a true bush enthusiast today.
And there's some more tugs for us, folks. Five of them. You've got four on screen and one bolted off to the right. Let's see, maybe then sit down again. I wonder what they were sitting on there, if they're in a mud wallow, if it was just a nice little open clearing. No. Oh. You know what? We are now in the alert zone. <laughs> Looks like we might go into the warning zone shortly. And then they'll, they'll definitely run off. But this is a prime example of the alert zone. This is a perfect example. If they had teeth or growling or then we'd be in a warning zone. And then the danger zone. Danger <laughs> zone. Very cool. Warthogs with nice white tushes mimicking tusks, so they must be. Oh, there goes all five of them. Lovely. Tails up in the air, little follow me mechanisms, like little aerials. Helping them spot each other in the tall grass. Hmm. All right, well, we are we're just going to quickly wipe the lens here. It's starting to drizzle. Sorry, I just want to quickly make sure that we. Wipe the lens there. All of a sudden, a little bit of drizzle has come in. Can you believe it? It's a little bit of sunshine. Still, a lot of blue skies around, but the drizzle has decided to come in. I'm sure it's not going to hang here for too long. It'll be here for a few minutes. It'll be gone. But yep, the wild dogs are still pretty much resting. They still haven't done much. Um, that other hyena has moved on. I think moved off to a little, onto another little spot and decided to also take a little bit of cover and we'll wait for these dogs to get moving. But I just want to say thank you so much, uh, Giraffe Girl. I see that you have been showing um, some photos and all that and pictures of where about we are with these wild dogs and where the Nkuhumas have been sighted. I took a look and I do appreciate that you have put that on and so everybody can at least understand the areas on Twitter or X. It's always nice to see wild dogs. I love seeing those, those wild white tails. And one thing about them is, of course, always following each other down roads or in, th in the thick areas and all that, and they'll follow each other by actually just following those white tails and all that. It's almost like a follow me sign, as well as if they do make a kill somewhere, what they'll do while they're busy feeding on the kill and other members are trying to look for them, what they'll do, they'll actually lift their white tails up while they're busy feeding, almost like a white flag. And then they can at least say, hey, listen, we are here, this is where we are, this is where we are busy feeding on a kill, come and join us. So they use those tails quite intensively for those purposes. Sorry, Mel, go again. I did not uh, copy what you said there. My earpiece just popped out for some reason. Ah, Linda, yes, of course, good things come to the to the ones that wait, for sure, for sure. Uh, as I say, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Never know what just uh, might happen in the next few minutes here. That's what I said about two hours ago, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's all right. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with waiting and sitting with these beautiful, beautiful animals. Mmm. Oh, don't even say that, Mel. So Mel's saying Murphy's Law. What's going to happen is as soon as the show is over, these dogs are going to run for something, run, run after something. And as soon as I say, thank you for joining us, goodbye, and all of a sudden they'll bring down an animal. <laughs> I 
What have you got any info? Oh, no, sorry, I didn't take a look on any info again with this pack. Rolo, yes, I'm sure they can adapt to a lot of different kinds of environments. I mean, you get them in Botswana, you get them in Namibia and semi arid areas. So, yes, I think wild dogs is pretty much. Uh, adaptable for a lot of different kind of environmental kind of changes um, if you're actually looking at something like a cheetah different I mean a cheetah will really struggle to adapt in very thick vegetation because it needs the speed it needs that open clearing open space so I think a cheetah is different where a leopard as well a leopard is one of those ones that will adapt to yields and it'll adapt to the drainage lines to thickets to open clearings so uh, and uh, wild dogs, the same thing. So yes, no, I think they they won't have, they won't struggle too much if uh, you know if this was like a semi-arid area at all. I'd love to see. I know that they did such a beautiful documentary on wild dogs there in Botswana, and uh, I remember in there in Botswana. Um, I think who was it? it was Kim Kim Volita? Oh, Impala's coming running straight towards him. Something's happening here. Sorry, there's Impala behind you. And she, and she didn't even see them. She came running straight towards this side. But she's looking at something further up the road. I'm not too sure. Sorry, I have to see Impala behind us. But he's snorting now. No, 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 it's fine. So I think she's maybe just picked up on the scent and she doesn't know what she's looking at. So I think we're just going to sit back here yeah, and see what plays out. Not that the dogs are showing too much interest. And that same female impala, that lonely one. I'm not too sure, Mel. I'm not too sure. The one is, the one wild dog is looking, the one wild dog is looking quite a bit that side with the one with the uh, collar. But I think as well as if they have to start chasing after that female, you know, the impalas are quick. Is it really worth uh, spending the energy on that, on a single female? If she had maybe a lamb with a different story, it'll be a different story, but because it's, she's in the open, I don't think they're gonna get any closer to her than what they are now. That's how they realized that. It's not worth it, not worth the effort. Oh, my ear just went closed, completely closed. My left ear. Mm, yeah, I'm talking inside of my head here at the moment. No. Sorry. I think the best thing for a closed ear like this is olive oil. Oh, there. Yeah. Well, surprise is coming back. <laughs> She's like, is there a possibility? Is there a possibility this time? Are these wild dogs going to do something for me now? You've got it. You've got it. Come on. <laughs> I think he's. I think this. I think this uh, poor hyena thinks. Okay, well, these four wild dogs are absolutely terrible to follow. I will never follow them ever again. What a bad idea. If I ever see you four again, I shall not follow you. You are the worst hunters ever. Bye bye. <laughs> Done. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> exactly, Mal. Well, I think he's, uh, you know, he's realized, no, nah, that's it. I'm not going to spend my energy following these lot anymore. Well, let's talk about spending some quality time with uh, with wild dogs this uh, this morning. Very very nice indeed. Oh, hear that? Uh, oh, uh, wait wait, hold on. We got something happening here. Huh? Maybe. Nope. <laughs> You're not getting much out of these wild dogs.
<laughs> exactly. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be positive here when I get up. I'm thinking, okay, this could be the moment. This could be the moment where we're going to get some action, and then it's nothing. But this could be the moment, and there's nothing. <laughs> But the Impala's still behind us, just not far enough. Now the Impala's about, I say, 50 meters. Still just trying to see exactly the pack that we've got here. I am trying to find out if anybody has sent any information on, on what pack we've got here. I still got the feeling there's a too long, the breakaway too long pack, but yeah, I shall double check. We all know the struggle of finding the perfect gift. But what if you could give them an unforgettable experience? Something truly extraordinary. Introducing Nature Eye. Fly a real drone remotely at iconic locations. Witnessing the beauty of nature like never before. Sign up to be an explorer and you could win one of these experiences yourself. Visit natureye.com today. Hey folks, if you have just joined us, welcome, you're on Wendy. I'm Game Ranger Gabe and behind the camera we have Mpo and we are just scratching around here in the central parts of Jumanal. Hopefully for a sighting that's about to blow our minds. Just keeping a little sneaky ear on the radio. Yeah, Gentlemen, I'm leaving these four with the Oh. Yeah, well, no great shakes, it's just a commercial vehicle leaving the sighting with Cedric. Yeah, that's, that's about it. I'm just trying to see. Okay, no, they're looking for they're looking for each other there. Nothing too interesting, nothing that's perked or piqued my interests. Lots of Impala tracks around here. Yeah. No fresh elephant, rhino, buffalo, lion, 
cheetah or leopard tracks around here. Oh, come on, please. It's see, there was one male lion spotted on the Londolosi boundary this morning looking at buffalo. I actually didn't think about asking who it was. Maybe it's him, and, or maybe it's part of the boys. I'll have to wait until after drive for all the guides to update us on their social medias, and then maybe we'll find out. But yeah, they had one male lion far south from where we are. Maybe it could be my hawk. Oi. Uh, gone. I don't know if you. Uh, we had a little marsh terrapin. Boy, yeah, it looks like a marsh terrapin. Busy walking around or crossing the road. He's in the grass here now. I'm not going to stick around with him for too long. Don't want to inconvenience his day. Oh, come on, Juma. Just squeeze something out for us, please. Feels like we're just driving around with no real purpose or cause. Okay, guys, as I carry on scratching about you, trying to find something noteworthy, I'm going to send you back over to Mr. Dalt with some sleepy wild dogs. Hopefully, they get up and chase that impala. Oh well, that's alright, I tried, I, hopefully, I was hoping that we were going to get a little bit of action you know, during the drive with the wild dogs and uh, you know, I was positive about it, but it's alright, at least we still get to see them. I can see this one's got his little head up, yay, a little bit of a, a view on that one. But we'll try again this afternoon, we'll try again come back around this area just to see if they might still be around, yeah, I doubt it. But you never know. Let's see if we can find them once again. Hmm? And also the other hyena that was here a little bit earlier on, the, that male, that immigrant male, he has. Uh, he decided to walk behind and there was that uh, female impala that was alarm calling and at the uh, wild dogs and it seemed like that impala was actually pretty much inching closer and closer towards the wild dogs and I was getting quite excited. I thought, okay, well maybe, just maybe we might get some action and then all of a sudden that hyena decided to spoil the entire show and chase the impala off. <laughs> and then and the hyena as well just disappeared on top of that as well. So yeah. Ooh, hello. Here we go. This one's got like a little black tail. See a black with a little white tip, eh? That one that just stood up there now. That was interesting. That was interesting. Hmm. I remember we used to have a wild dog like that many years ago at one of, with one of the packs. I saw a black, black tail with a little white tip at the end. Because most of the time you'll find they've got these white tails. Hmm. No, no, it's gone. I just heard Cindy D. Can. That's all I heard. So please, Mel, if you can go with that comment or question again, please send it through. Wow, the largest. Well, wasn't this one of 19 was this one? I was 19 was huge. I mean, that is huge. What a little of 19. I don't think I've heard of anything bigger. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe there is something larger. I'm sure you will send those comments through. Let me know. Let us know, please. But I thought that 19, I was quite uh, taken back by that size. Really taken back by the Sand Ottawa pack. 19 pups. Oh, my word. So if it's 19, maybe it can get into the 20s. Mm. Can imagine over 20 pups running around. 
Oh, I so want to see that. And I so want to see a, a hyena den again on, hopefully on this, on Juma one day. I think that was one of the questions earlier on as well, was, uh, was there ever a hyena, I mean, a hyena, a uh, wild dog den on uh, Juma. And I've never heard of it, but uh, heard of one being on this side since I've been here, but I might be mistaken. I want to see little ones. And those pups now of the Ottawa Sand Pack, the 16, they should be May, June, July, August, September. They should be about seven months now, six, seven months old now. Hmm. I saw a video posted on them the other day, running under the vehicle, one of the vehicles in the west, of course, the pups are all running around, circling and having a whole lot of bit of uh, playtime and uh, going under the vehicle and uh, it looked like it was uh, quite a, a magical sighting that. Now, uh, this pack itself, did they have pups this uh, year? I'm not too sure at all, I doubt it. Unless if they did, and then they might have lost the, the pups early on. But I haven't got much information on, first of all, which pack this is. I'm still trying to figure out. Still trying to figure out. Usually we'd get uh, information on it. But it seems like we're not getting much now. Eco Training's professional field guide course can make your dreams a reality. This comprehensive program comprises five months of theoretical and practical training in the African bush with highly qualified instructors in multiple locations. Enroll today and receive 5,000 Rand off using the promo code. If you've just finished school or tertiary education and you want to head into the wild, Eco Training's professional field guide course is for you. It was a rather intense sighting and then after that he left the alpha female, walked over to the lioness who had started feeding on the, the beta female. 
And the good old Tav and Gumi obviously heard all the commotion. He came down, found the Alpha Snaggletooth, picked her up, and took her into a tree. And then Tav and Gumi started feasting on the wild dog. Yeah, it was the first time I cried on the game drive. And I just kept quiet. I was like, sorry guys, I, this is a bit intense. Let's go for a drink stop. We're driving, driving, driving. We got to the drink stop and I just remember, I just, I tried to tell the track. I said, just, I'll be back now. Walked off and it was a beautiful sunset. I will never forget it. It was orange. The whole sky was orange. The clouds looked like little pillows, like little cotton wools. Oh pink lining, we just had that sighting, the guests were ecstatic, the photographer was like, you'll never see this again, and then just to top it off was that sunset. Hmm. Alright, well, it is unfortunately coming to the end of the show now and I really did hope that uh, we were going to get some more action out of these wild dogs and uh, <laughs> clearly not, I think, as a BK says, I think he's, he's never seen such lazy dogs <laughs> in his life. <laughs> it's been a very, very uh, slow morning with them, but it's alright, uh, wild dogs is wild dogs. <laughs> Yeah, Mel, maybe this will be the last, like the last two minutes, you'll see all of a sudden get all the action happening here. But I doubt it. Uh, I doubt it. It's all right. We'll try again this afternoon. I'm sure maybe Gabe will try and come into this area to see if he can follow up on these wild dogs and uh, get some action out of that. But uh, other than that, it's been a great morning. Oh, it's been fantastic. I've been, I've been very chuffed. I think BK and myself are very happy, especially that there was so much drizzle this morning. And for us to get to a perfect position to keep the dogs as well, um, it all actually panned out and worked out just, just perfect. So, yeah, and we got to see the, um, and two of the hyenas as well, in Bilu and uh, surprise. <laughs> uh, no, <clears throat> yeah, that's true, Mal. Actually, that rain. But then again, I was actually coming into this area, so it was my, my normal plan of action to come here. I would have bumped into them, so I uh, could say thanks to the rain roof in one way. In one way. But yeah, it's alright, no problem. It was been, it's been a lovely morning. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And we'll see what happens this afternoon again. Hopefully the weather clears up nicely for the day, which would be perfect for the afternoon. Ah, oh, Harold, you're most welcome. Thank you for joining us on our sunrise safari this morning. I really do appreciate it. And uh, as I said, I'm crossing fingers and that, that uh, this afternoon is going to deliver a whole lot of new, in in interesting sightings and exciting stuff. Got, the, got a feeling. It's the last drive for the year. The last drive for the year. And also, Eco Training is their last drive eh, this afternoon. So, Eco Training Pridelands is their last drive this afternoon. So, I'm hoping for Andrew and Panda that they can find some amazing stuff. Maybe they can find again another leopard like they did last night. Crossing fingers on that, it'll be a, a beautiful sending off from that area. But, yes, uh, from of course uh, myself. And BK and the Wild Dogs and the rest of the uh, Wild Earth crew, thank you so much for all the comments and questions that you have sent through to us this afternoon, this morning. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready in the afternoon, this morning. But yeah, thanks. But yeah, at least we can spend the last few seconds here with these uh, Wild Dogs and, you know, hopefully Murphy, Murphy doesn't come in here and say, all right, you know, let these dogs get up now and start chasing after something. And then we have to close the show without seeing much happening. 
<laughs> I would be cold, it would be sad. <laughs> but yes, please make sure that you do join us this afternoon on our Sunset Safari. And uh, yeah, we will see you out there once again from the, from the Wild Earth crew. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.